very warm welcome to the CX Green Room. My name is Claire Beatty. I'm Senior Director for Customer Advocacy and Engagement at Genesis. I am joined by my co-host, Ginger Conlon, Senior Director for Thought Leadership, and uh, Steve Hemmler, who's VP for Member Services at Member First. Right. Sorry, hold on. Hi everyone, sorry about that. Um, right, so very warm welcome to the show today. We are talking about how Members First has successfully migrated to cloud uh, with Genesis. We have the whole story, how they approached their migration, how they went about it, the change management, the successes, the lessons learned, and then the roadmap for what's next. So we're really excited to get started. So before we do that, Steve, one of the things that we do here at Genesis in the green room is we welcome the big hitters in the industry, uh, like your good self. And you know, you're a very demanding bunch, uh, have, so, have a long, long list of requests for us in the green room. Yes, uh, and so we, we learned that your special item that you always have to have around you, what is it? Coffee. <laughs> and not just any old coffee. Tell us about exactly the kind of coffee that you insist on. I love Ethiopian coffee. So thank you. Yeah, it's. I used to work with a guy who was a total coffee nerd had his own roaster and everything. And, and he got me hooked on like just different types of coffee. And I just really love Ethiopian. So there you go. Well, I have to tell you, you're a kindred spirit because I am crazy about Ethiopian coffee. I have a friend uh, who used to live in Addis and she brings me bags and bags of the stuff. There you go. So uh, when I heard that you were excited about Ethi Ethiopian coffee as well, I was like, wow, here's a man who knows the good stuff. There you go. <laughs> all right, great. Well, um, very excited that you've joined us. First of all, just for everyone out there, tell us a bit about Members First. Like, what's your organization and what does your contact center environment look like? Sure. So, um, we're really fortunate to be in the credit union industry. Um, you know, credit unions are unique. Uh, we've been in the US almost 100 years now, we're approaching 100 years soon. And financial cooperatives, it's people helping people. We, um, our founding members, 73 years ago, nine of them pulled $45 together to help a coworker buy an appliance, right? And so ever since then, we've been doing the same thing. We like to say that our founding members understood monetary ride sharing before ride sharing was a buzzword, you know, and, and today we do that with 500,000 members and over $7 billion in assets. And so it's a great organization. We're very financially healthy as uh, you know financial institutions go, and we have just incredible uh, culture. Tell us a bit about the call center environment. Yeah, so um, <clears throat> we have about 360 uh, contact center type associates across the organization in 10 different business units. Uh, the primary contact center takes the lion's share of all of those contacts. So we take close to a million member interactions a year primarily through voice and um we we do that through chat chatbot co-browse inbound voice outbound onboarding and welcome calls smtp emails uh outbound real-time mfa sms uh, so we a bunch of different uh type of interactions that we that we do but uh, with about 100 associates in our primary contact center Right. Okay. So what, what would you say is your vision for customer experience? Like what, what kind of experience do you want to deliver to your members? You know, I, I think I'd go to our mission for members first. You know, our mission is that we serve our members, associates, and communities through support, empowerment, and meaningful relationships. Right. And so for us, um, we want to, you know, our, our consumers want us to, you know, show them, that we know them. Our associates and internal associates just want the tools and resources they need to do their job. And so for us, what we're looking for is just a, a foundational architecture and technology that could allow us to do all of that. And that's, you know, we were on Genesis before upgrading to the Genesis Cloud CX solution, but it has dramatically helped us as we've, as we've implemented that solution. Amazing, excited to learn more. Yeah. 
Well, so that sounds like your mission was the impetus for that transition to cloud. Can you dive in a little bit more? What were some of the conversations that were being had that spurred all of this? Yeah, good, good question. Um, so I joined Members First about two years ago. I've been in the credit union industry for, <clears throat> well, over 30 years, we'll say it that way. And um, when I came to Members First, there was already an initiative underway that we knew we had to update our communications technology. And so I was very fortunate to walk into an environment where my boss uh, had already done a lot of the legwork. She had already procured a lot of the momentum behind it and the budget money. So what I was handed was here, let's make this happen. And so then, then the challenge became, okay, what is it that we want to accomplish? Do we use the same partners that we have today? What's the solution and, and what are the issues that we need to resolve? So what were some of those uh, issues and you know, plans that were kind of in place yeah. that, you, that you took forward? Yeah, great question. You know, we when I when we started looking at it, we had 11 different interfaces on seven different systems. We had a separate chat solution, you know, chatbot, co-browsing. It was all separate. We didn't have visibility across the the contact center. We and we had very little visibility into what was happening with our members. And so we wanted to make sure that what we were solving for provided a foundational architecture, right? We've got this long roadmap, this vision of where we want to get to. We knew that we needed a foundational architecture to begin with. And so looking at all of those solutions, you know, do we stick with a third party for chat? Do we, do we go with the Genesis solution? Do we, do we keep all these different interfaces? How do we merge them together? And, and we, we were really able to solve that in a good way. And we'll talk, you know, all about that. So um, if anyone's watching this and has questions for Steve, please do go ahead and put them in the comments. We will see them and get to them. Um, Steve, so what, what I want to know is how did you go about creating the sort of the roadmap for the migration? Yeah, it's a great question because it's so many different parts. You're, you're dealing with 10 different business units. And I will tell you, I, I said this at CCW in Vegas, and we had, I, I was very fortunate to have this incredible project manager. Her name is Angela Wiley. You know, she pulled it all together because it was so important for us to identify all the different um, use cases across the organization, all those different business units, because we knew what we were getting was a very deep technology that could do a ton of things for us. Not every business unit needed that. And so part of the challenge was not necessarily identifying all the things we needed to do. It was finding what are the things we had to do by business unit. So for example, in the contact center, they needed the full suite of everything. But a lot of the other uh, business units that we were working with, the 260 other contact center type associates that are on the system now, they didn't need all those features. And so just creating a matrix right up front of all the system capabilities and then identifying which business units needed those was really, really important. It actually formed the foundation then of the project plan that we that we used going forward as well. Sounds interesting. I'm sure a lot of people would like to get their hands on that matrix. <laughs> It was a very simple Excel spreadsheet, but the depth of it really proved mm -hmm. out in the long run when we were implementing. Mm -hmm. And and it also served as the foundation then for user acceptance testing plans and all of that, because we knew we knew what pieces each group needed to end up with. We knew what the it allowed us to measure the the metrics before we converted and then also allowed us to measure them after. And mm -hmm. some of that. We also created a matrix of reporting, right? So we knew what reporting we had in ICBM before the conversion, but we also needed to know what we needed afterwards. And there's some really great reporting that I, that I wanna make sure we touch on at some point during the conversation too. Well, shout out to Angela. Sounds like she did a tremendous job. She did. Tell us about the change management. What was the, what was the, the plan that you put together for that? Yeah, we just, Plowed through it. <laughs> no, <I'm sorry. laughs> Just get it done. Um, you know, I, I was I'm very fortunate too to have uh, one of the people that I work with. His name's Sean Poff. He 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 was familiar with a Genesis conversion that happened at another organization, 
And he, he was very helpful in, in helping us kind of navigate a lot of this as well. We had a bunch of business partners, the organization from our digital banking team, engineering teams, web development, but all of them together. And again, I can't stress enough the culture that we have here. It's very collaborative and everybody wants to be successful. And, and we're going through a little bit of a, you know, not a little bit, but we're going through a technology renaissance right now, kind of, and really making the investments to help support our mission long-term. And uh, so when you've got a phenomenal financial institution, you got a great culture, and now you're making the investments in technology. It's pretty exciting. And so the change management, again, Angela did a great job of just seeing all the pieces and parts and what were the deadlines that we had to meet for certain items. And then our, our, our fellow associates just jumped in and did a fantastic job of making it all happen. It was incredible. We have a question here. Uh, so from an from an enablement perspective, how did you create the matrix for the project plan? Somebody really does want this, this matrix. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, that's a great question, Maggie. Uh, you know, the statement of work helped us to find what we were looking for. We also had a business partner. We went with Converge One. We actually left our, our previous uh, business partner that we were with and we, we selected to go with Converge One. And again, all of this was done because we wanted a foundational architecture that we can build on top of. And we really wanted a business partner that could help us do that as well. You know, there are a lot of business partners out there who will... Um, somebody's got a live mic. Oh, there you go. A lot of business partners out there will offer you their own flavor on top of it. But we really wanted... We wanted a business partner that could help us maximize our use of what the Genesis Cloud CX product was bringing to the table. And so that business partner, along with our statement of work and our scope, really helped us define the key elements that we wanted to look at through the project. So again, for example, we had chat, but our chat and chatbots were in a completely separate solution. We wanted all of that together, and, and I'll talk a little bit about that some more, but, um, <clears throat> and maybe I'll give a little bit of that away because it's important to understand what we landed with, right? What we ended up with was a single interface for, again, chat, chatbot, co-browse, voice, inbound, outbound, SMTP, email, all of the interactions that are coming in for all of those interactions are transcribed, I can search them. I can see the, you know, the sentiment on all of them. We can search for a, spin, a single word that was spoken in or typed in any one of those interactions and find all the interactions that meet that qualification. I can see the, the average handle time. I can see what time of day. We, we, had a, we had a situation where we had a branch who said, hey, somebody transferred a, a member to our branch so left a voicemail and all we have is their name. Our, our team of managers searched for the name and actually found six calls during the day with that name and they were able to identify which one it was and do all that within like three to five minutes. That was impossible before. And so where we are today is when we roll out new products and new services, like we just upgraded our pay bills service not too long ago, we knew immediately we were giving feedback to the project team on exactly how many calls we were getting, how long those calls were taking. And it's all because the technology, the foundational architecture again is there. And we're, we're using the native products in Genesis Cloud CX to do all that. So back to Maggie's question, right? It's important for you to know upfront, what are the things that you're trying to solve? Can the software do that? And then list them. And then who needs that, right? And so in the columns, it was each of the business units and then we put a check mark beside each one that needed it. And we took it a little bit further because we prioritized those things, right? Some things didn't make it. Not every business unit got everything. Uh, for example, one of the things we did, we created an interface for our core teller system and it's integrated right in Genesis. So when that we're using Genesis Cloud CX also for our IVR. Right. And so that when that member identifies in the IVR and it comes through, it presents to our associate. Not every business unit needs that because they're not they're not working in that system. So I hope that helps. That was an amazing answer, Steve. Thank you. I think, Great. you know, when we talk about um, Genesis Cloud, we really talk about that that visibility 
uh, with interactions at scale, but also individually. So I think you gave a really powerful example of that. Yeah. Speaking of powerful examples, what was your was most successful about your journey to cloud? Yeah, you know, again, we talked about we talked before, you know, we had 11 systems and seven interfaces and, you know, trying to understand what what were we doing? What were we successful at? Where did we need to adjust? And today, all of that is just so um, readily available. I think one of the greatest successes for us is just the improvement that we that we've seen in our production, in our numbers and in our associate performance. Um, <clears throat> And so I'll give you an example. You know, we we use incentives here to to help promote the behaviors that we want with our associates, but the visibility of that wasn't wasn't great. Well, with Genesis Cloud CX, um, almost all of the things that are important are you know punctuality. Are you here on time? Are you available when we need you to be available? How 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 long are you putting a member on hold? All of those things now are built right into the gamification. So every associate now for themselves can see where they're ranking in the entire contact center for the day by points. They can also see the average point score for everybody else in the contact center. And, and it helps drive performance. Not only that, it also helps the supervisors who didn't necessarily have that visibility before either. And so something as simple as knowing that somebody is consistently late for break, you know, you would think that's an easy thing to see, but when you've, when you have that many interactions and you've got a lot going on and you have to know every product and every service and every associate and who's here and who's not here, some of those facts, some of those pieces of data, you're just not going to see. And so pulling it all together, you know, so we're using the workforce management that's native in Genesis cloud CX. So all of those uh, gamification pieces that have to do with schedule or adherence or conformance, they're all just naturally built in. When when the schedule changes for the day, I don't have to go and update that somewhere else. It's automatically updated. So that visibility, Ginger, was just a game changer for us. Add on top of that, the visibility that we just talked about before on the interactions we're having with our members, right? If our mission is to you know serve our members and associates and communities through support and power and meaningful relationships, how much better does it get when we actually know why people are calling in and what they need right and so i hate wrap-up codes they are like the bane of our existence right because if you're if you're a contact center associate what are you going to do you're going to pick the one that you're most comfortable with and if we say hey something's hot today you know we do use them now what we've done is we've adjusted our strategy now we use wrap up codes for things that are urgent, things that have just popped up to try and get a feel for it. But honestly, the, the automated system monitoring of topics based on transcription, we find that's often a better representation of what's really happening, but we use both, right? We use the wrap up code, but then we compare that to what the system's finding. So the visibility was just, just a game changer for us let a, and, and again, that is making the transition from using separate vendors and pulling it all together in one interface where I can see everything. And if everything is in the native Genesis Cloud CX solution, now quality monitoring monitors any of those interactions in the same interface. And it makes it easier for associates to see it and they can see their scores and we can tie their quality scores into the gamification that they also see, not only the incentives that, that we pay them for. That's fantastic visibility. Yeah. And of course, because we've talked about, you know, the most successful, now we've got a question. Sure. What was your biggest challenge in migration to cloud? Yeah, you know, that's a great question. We, we were a little ahead of the curve, you know, on some of this technology, you know, we use chat and chatbot in our online banking products. And so um, our, our, our online banking engineers did a fantastic job working with the chat and chatbot with Genesis. Um, at that time, um, you know, I think we were, we were probably pushing the envelope a little bit of <laughs> where it was. Genesis looks at, um, web messaging more like a you know like an ongoing text message and so for us we we wanted to limit the 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 time that that message would show but 
we were able to work with Genesis and Converge One and get through that. Um, I would say that the biggest challenge outside of any of that, just being on the front edge of, of the technology, was just, I wish we probably would, should have just spent more time up front figuring out what it is we wanted and how we wanted to do it. But, you know, the reality is you're never going to have enough time in any project because you want to get it done. If you're going to make the investment, you you want to get it. People don't want to live on projects forever. Mm -hmm. Um, so that brings us to another question about some of the improvements that you've seen in terms of your numbers. Sure. So the questions from Jackie, how much of an improvement have you seen in your authentication rate, self-service and containment? Any any numbers like that you can share with us? Yeah, happy to. Uh, containment rate is one that we're just astounded with. Um, just to give you an idea, our, our chat bot <clears throat> last year, I'm pulling the stats from, from August that just came out. Um, our chat bot conversations last year were about 14,600, okay? Our chat bot conversations this year are 135% higher. 34,427 chat bot conversations. All while the, the part of those conversations that ended up with a live associate have actually decreased 6.5%. So last year we had about 8,000 chat conversations that ended up with a live chat associate this year we're down to 7,400. And so we compl and all of that with close to an 84% containment rate. Uh, we were around 50 to 53% containment rate prior to Genesis Cloud CX. We're now at 84%. So, and again, what we attribute that to is just the ease of using the system. We have one conversational designer who monitors the conversations and what what the Genesis Cloud CX solution does for us is it watches those conversations and actually makes recommendations on the intentions that were the or the answers that we already have built. And so we're we're constantly refining that, right? Because we want to drive self-service and, and we don't have associates staff 24-7, but the chatbot's always there. And so we're always trying to drive that performance. And the chatbot really has performed very, very well for us. Aside from that, just the visibility that we were talking about before, um, like for August, we saw a five and a half percent increase in volume in calls year over year, right? In August of this year, we had almost 74,000 calls. Uh, last year, we were about 69, uh, almost 70,000. But what we were able to do with the same number of people, not adding any associates, we have a four and a half percent improvement in our service level and a 50% decrease in abandonment rate. And so what we're finding is again, that visibility for our associates, for our supervisors, all of that's helping drive production and, and efficiency for us. Uh, as far as self service and authentication rates, those are some of the things we're working on. When we, when we converted to Genesis Cloud CX, one of our goals was that we never wanted our, our consumers, our members to know that we were doing it. It was one of our objectives. We wanted to convert and, and that means our IVR, our IVR self-service, our authentication on the self-service and, and we were able to do it. And again, what we were building was a foundational architecture. Now that we've got that in place, now we're working on the roadmap on the things that are coming next. So about 22% of our members authenticate, you know, in the IVR before they get to us. But those are some of the things we're working on long term to improve that that rate. Those are really fantastic results. Yeah. Um, actually, another good question here from Jackie again. Thank you, Jackie, for these great questions. <laughs> Wanting to know a little bit about the split in terms of how you did things with your in-house, your own team of developers, uh, how much you lent on the Genesis team and how much you lent on the Converge One team, I guess, for the implementation, then also things around like enhancements, analytics and reporting. Yeah, great question. Uh, Converge team one did the Converge one team did um, all of the call flow design development. We gave them design on the IVR and how it existed today, and they they built that for us. Um, they also used a business partner, Novovox, who did the um, the API connection to our core teller system. They had familiarity with that, but yeah, Converge one did. Uh, all, all the development work on the call flows. And that that's one thing that I will tell you, you know, when you migrate to this cloud solution, there's no export out of 
you know, Pure Connect or wherever you're at and import. You are doing um, you are doing a new build. Mm -hmm. Now, that challenges some business units who just got calls before. They had no idea. Oh, I just answer the phone. Right. They don't know what happens in that call flow. They don't know how calls are transferred. So it was a really good opportunity for us to work with all the different business units and help them understand the options that they have available to them and 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 the standardization that we wanted to create in service level. Um, but you are creating it from from scratch, but that's where Converge One was helpful to, to do that for us and help us get that done. That's yeah, good good to really understand like how that those relationships worked. Yeah, I, Claire, I will say a good business partner is so critical, right? Choose wisely, right? <laughs> because you're in you're endeavoring on a big project, and the the results will impact the service you deliver to your to your consumer. So tell us what's next. Yeah. So we. Um, <laughs> So uh, again, we're on this technology renaissance uh, a journey a little bit. Uh, we signed with Salesforce and we're really excited about that. We had a CRM before, but we were really excited about taking that to the next level. Um, we're looking at authentication like everyone else in the world, right? How do we know that the person on the phone really is who they say they are? And how do we do that in a way that's that's easy for our members and for our associates. We want to we make everybody's life simpler and safer and more convenient. And of course, our, we're constantly striving to develop new ways to self-serve, right? Um, live support is great, but <laughs> we we want our members to be able to, to, to do what they need themselves, but then we're, there, we're here to help them anytime we can. And so that's where the Salesforce partnership makes it great because, again, a consumer would say, show me that you know me, and that's we're, we're going to be doing that. And we're pretty excited about the recent uh, announcement between Salesforce and Genesis. Mm -hmm. uh, it's, it's really exciting. The timing couldn't be better for us. So um, beyond that, uh, we're looking to integrate. We love the workforce management. We'd love to integrate that with our HR systems um, so that there's a tighter integration and um you know, we're also playing with voice and and uh, we think long term there's there's a, a much better solution. You know, we'll be able to do much more with natural language and really just helping improve the overall experience for our for our consumers, our members. Wow, it's really exciting times. And yeah, yeah. The, um, the Salesforce partnership, having that really like comprehensive 360 degree view of the customer uh, yeah. unlocks a lot of potential. For sure. So I'd love to wrap with a quick question all of these things you've got all this great visibility all of this transformation that's been happening was there anything surprising that you learned in all this um you know i think the most surprising part was was how deep the visibility was i mean just the ease of being able to you know, when you when you pull up an interaction, <clears throat> you're not just seeing the transcription. The system automatically identifies the different moments in the interaction for you. You know, like, gee, this seems really like a difficult part of the conversation or boy, the sentiment went south here. You know, I, I think those the intuitiveness of the system. And again, we're using it. We're using the native products developed in 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 Genesis Cloud CX. So we're, we're able to take advantage of every aspect of that all at the same time. And I think the other thing that was so surprising to me is, you know, we're using the communications platform, you know, as a service, right? Cloud communications as a service. And I think what was so surprising too is every Wednesday, Genesis sends out an email, right? And they're making constant feature and product updates every Wednesday. And it's not just, I, I think just last week was the first time I saw an email with just one thing on it, right? What we've, what we've experienced is we actually have to have our, our senior conversational designer, our guy that, you know, he actually has a task that every Wednesday he has to take all the bullet points that Genesis is releasing and, and actually assess them. Like, what are the ways we can take advantage of all those? Because there's really a lot of great features that are coming out constantly and making the system better. So, and again, that's the benefit of the cloud, but I think that was really surprising, at least to me anyway. Well, I think we're just going to have to have you back another time to talk about what's <laughs> happened. Happy you to. Know, 
since this conversation. Yeah. There's so much going on. Awesome. Well, Steve, thank you so much for telling us your story and all the detail. I think we probably could have kept going, especially with all the questions. Sure. But we're going to leave it here. And thank you all again. Thanks to everyone who joined us today. We'll see you next time in the CX Green Room. Great. Thank you so much. Thank you, Steve. Thanks, everybody.